Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another Community Connections. Uh, it is whatever day it is. They, every day seems like the same. I'm excited today to have uh, my cousin, <laughs> Bill Crane, owner of CSI Crane and, and consultant and uh, commentator and columnist all over the country. Uh, but Bill, welcome to the Com Community Connections show. How are you doing today? Glad to be here, Ryan. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Well, tell our audience just a little bit. I, I can't do it justice. Uh, I'll let you share just some of the things you do because I know they're seeing a familiar face today but you have articles and you do commentary just so we can talk and then we'll go into other things just a brief overview sure. of your background. I'm a uh, journalist by training graduated from the University of Georgia Grady School was on the Grady College board for the last decade. Initially worked in television and worked for a lot of politicians that folks out there may know particularly the boomers in the audience folks like Max Cleland and Mike Bowers, Paul Coverdell and Zell Miller. And in 2000, was asked initially by NBC affiliate WXIA to become a political analyst on their air. Did that for 11 years, and now I'm in my 19th year. Of Can't you believe you're only 25? Yeah, um, <laughs> I've been very young. Um, that's right. That's right. WSB Television, Action News, and WSB Radio since 2006. Uh, thanks to Doc and Carolyn Glenn in DeKalb County and the Champion, I started a weekly newspaper column in 2009. It's now syndicated in almost 40 outlets, including Our Town Magazines. In, yes, uh, thank you. Cab in Gwinnett counties um, and reaching out to Georgians. And, and in this time that we're in, it's been interesting the last few weeks, how many more reader responses because people are picking up newspapers again. It's fun, that it's I funny. received from the Brunswick News. I got an email from somebody in Egypt who subscribed to the column of the military last week. So uh, in this time that we are closed in, and in some ways we're more connected. I love that, Bill. I mean, it's fun. Yes, and you have the two two magazines I own. You you put great columns in there, and you know, since we are cousins, we uh, he does Crane's Corner. I gave him that nickname, but he's one man's opinion everywhere else. Uh, so I we but but uh, it, it is um, it is funny. I'm seeing um, people you know paying attention there. We we really do have a captive audience right now for the written word or for these type of uh, videos right here because. I think you would agree we're all in need of a joke, some humor, whatever. We, you know, we know this virus is going around. We, we hear about the curve. We hear about when, you know, we will get better. Things will um, turn around. But you wrote a column, which I'll let our readers read it in a week or so. But uh, we have a lot to be thankful for, for like you, you can allude to it, the little and the big things we took for granted. Well, the little things we take for granted that we don't have, everybody's missing right now. We crave uniformity and normalcy. And but despite all the inconveniences, we're still very blessed. I mean, our lights are on. This isn't a snow jam. It's not a apocalypse where, you know, yes, there's illness out there. Yes, we, we will lose some lives. But the majority of us are just in this inconvenient situation. I've, you know, I've got my victory garden in already. And, uh, That's right. Uh, wouldn't have, have time to, to have done that but for this. And I've started on spring cleaning, and I hell, finally got the Christmas tree put away. <laughs> uh, so there are opportunities in this if we look for them and it's kind of half empty half full I'm trying with my kids both of them I haven't seen as much of because uh, my uh, ex-wife um, is with her parents in Virginia my other child Olivia is with her mother and stepfather and they're taking this shut in very seriously as they should uh, Olivia has Down syndrome so she's slightly immune compromised I don't want to risk anything with my parents so I've been talking to them on snapchat and facetime and, and virtually and on the phone every day but I don't want to risk with a very immune compromised mother inadvertently carrying anything into her house, but we're still in contact every day. And thank God we've got this technology that we can do. Yeah, you're right. And we were just talking before we went on air. I was FaceTime with my parents last night, same thing. And just like Aunt Lynn and uncle Jerry, give them a shout out there. But you know, you know, um, <clears throat> even, you know, Bill, I've asked, you know, in the beginning of this, I said is, had you guys ever even heard of anything to the degree of this before or heard of it from your grandparents that were like, you know, it, you're a history buff, Bill. I mean, we didn't have the technology, I guess, going back in like 1918 with the plague or something like that. But um, I guess what people are feeling is there's an unknown after an unknown after an unknown. I keep saying the only one that really knows how all this is going to play out is God. I believe a whole fully will be to the other side of this. But I also think it's important, like you said, you're getting the Christmas tree put up. I need to get mine away, you know, and, and uh, make some goals and get to that to-do list. You've been, you know, we've been I've talking. Had, I've been making some pretty good progress through my to-do list. I've actually started on my tax preparation, which should have already been done, but it was lagging and I'm refining the house. So I've got several you know, things that have needed to be done that are getting done. Um, 
my mother lived through the polio crisis of the 1950s before Jonas Salk's vaccine was uh, widely in distribution. She lost her younger brother, her only sibling at the age of three, and she nearly died. She survived, and she survived many things since, but I've heard about that from her again, and in the family, most of us, even our uh, Greg Kramer parents that are gone, would have been around for the 1980 Spanish flu, 18 Spanish flu, pardon me, and I was involved in some of the public health response to SARS, which is in 2003 and 2004. But no, I've never been through myself uh, a public health crisis of this magnitude in terms of the fear. But, you know, if you think about it again, positive and negative, there's been a lot of backlash against vaccines. Consider once there is a vaccine for this, how many people want it now who've been pushing off on German measles, rubella, and regular measles and mumps because of the fear of possibly getting some amount of mercury that's not even in most vaccines that people are administered. So hopefully there'll be a reset button push, much as there was after 9-11, and we'll come out of this stronger, not only as a nation, but some of the petty thing. I mean, people were arguing about daylight savings time previously. Oh. Well, you know, it, you know, Bill, and you, you study politics for a living, but uh, I'm hopeful we, as a society, like you said, come out uh, more united. I keep saying, I've been saying this in Collins for a year and a half, but I mean it, you more united. And I have a forum that uh, I started about a year and a half ago, and it's, you know, for, I don't know, about 1,500 people. It's a closed group forum. And I saw the other night, I got a message from uh, one of the writers from the magazine, and two people had gotten into a heated debate, ridiculous debate about something. And she's like, are you are you good with this? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not monitoring it 24-7. Basically, you know, we, we, we told them, you know, knock this off. It was some political thing. And they got on some high horse. And I'm thinking, how in the world, I don't care what you believe right now, is that what you're talking about? And my I hope, like you said, after 9-11, you know, we had, uh, if I remember correctly, Congress, was they singing together? Or... They sang God Bless America on the steps of the Capitol building. And it was inspiring, not only that it, it, it wasn't planned, they were actually all out there kind of in a show of unity, and some of the members started singing, and then they all just stopped and completed singing the song. And it was, there was still a belief at that time that the Capitol, which was not successfully hit, that that, um, that plane went down in the field in Pennsylvania was a continuing target, the Capitol Dome. And they were kind of saying, you know, not on our watch. Now, and, and, you know, the other thing I was thinking of, Bill, is uh, I remember George W. Bush walking out triumphantly uh, to pit throw that first pitch out, you know. And I think, you know, that brings me goosebumps or him standing on top of that hill. I'm talking about no matter who the president is, you know, as a country being unified. The thing here that's a little different is we want to be back at, at work and do these things, and we're not really allowed to do some of the things we want to do. And, and I mean, you, you have a probably unique take on that. And that's probably the hardest part when we're used to seeing the Masters or March Madness or you know these things we've taken for granted. They've all been kind of taken away from us, and which creates a, a weird feeling. You know, let's just face it, people watching, it's just a weird feeling. And it'll, it will pass, but it doesn't mean those emotions aren't real. Well, they are real. I mean, if, you, if you're a golf nut, this is the biggest week of the year, and it's, it ain't going to happen, at least – they're talking about a fall masters, which I think in Augusta would be really beautiful. I did too. Um, but, and, and there will be a masters again. Um, patience is not something the American people, particularly millennials, not to insult some of your audience, but are good with, uh, being told you can't have it right now with Amazon prime and all of the other ways we can get anything instantly is unusual. And like I was saying with the garden, you know, we went in with seeds this year instead of transplanting seedlings and plants, they'll come, up, but they'll take a little longer and a little bit more watering and care. And so now we do actually have the time. Most people in the metro Atlanta are saving about two, two and a half hours a day, not having to commute. Absolutely. And the transition's been a little easier for me because of the nature of my business, I write a lot. So I've been able to work from home before this. And so it wasn't all foreign to me to sit down at this keyboard that I'm talking to you from today. I've got offices that are about a mile away, but these two places are about inter interchangeable for sure. me and the majority of my employees work from home. So that part of the transition was easier, but not seeing my child the, every third day of the week, that's been tough. Not going to visit my parents, to check on them. There's only so much you can tell in this medium. But again, we'll get through it. And whether the toughest day is April the 15th or April the 23rd, or we're still dealing with this in June, I'm actually more worried about the carnage to the economy than I am the psyche of the American people or our ability to rebound. Yeah, um, and as... 100%, Bill. You know, there's, I said this yesterday at the Facebook Live. I said, you know, there's people who say, just let it play out in the field, blah, blah, blah. And you can't do that to the vulnerable or the elderly. And, but I, I strongly believe uh, when I was down, we were in Epcot on New Year's Eve, and I was 
shoulder to shoulder with all of my closest friends inside the Epcot, uh, enjoying a few drinks, just going around the country. But my my father and stepfather in law, he had all the symptoms of a virus respiratory and was in in Orlando's uh, emergency room for like nine days. Uh, and they couldn't diagnose what it was on almost a respirator. He had every symptom. They'd been at Epcot doing singing courses, whatever. My my point of saying that for this panic out there, I think this has been here longer than we realize. Uh, I think people have been exposed to it in the past. Possibly they're immune to it or have already had symptoms of some sort. And 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 my biggest point is I too, I really, the small businesses of the world have to be there for each other. I mean, what I mean by that is if we're trying to put out some news of something and people go, we can't wait to get the magazine and people say, yeah, well, we're not going to support because we don't know what April or May or whatever it's going to be. It's a trickle down effect. And, you know, everybody's in it together. I mean, literally globe, globally, not just United States. I mean, and that, that kind of panic of business and hoarding money and okay, if you get a stimulus check, are you just going to put it in your savings account or are you going to go spend it on something? You know, and that's the, that's really where I think a lot of our audience and business owners are like, what do I do? I mean, how do I feel? Now is also the time to think outside the box a little bit, consider barter. Yep. Um, all of this, I've got a video production on underway as we're speaking down the street from my offices now. And part of that project is being bartered for something that they have that we need. So there's lots of different ways to kind of keep the doors open. You may not be able to pay everybody a hundred percent, but many of employees would prefer 50% to being laid off unless they think they can draw more in unemployment benefits. And you know, engage with the stimulus package that's out there. There are a lot of things that people, particularly the self-employed, never before could apply for unemployment insurance, could never apply directly for SBA loans because they didn't have the same kind of finances and their tax returns didn't show as much income. So I do believe our government is trying, but we should not rely on the state, federal, or local government to, to fill all these holes. Checking on our neighbors, that's on us. Um, helping the little lady next door get her trash to the street, that's on us. I mean, we can't go on lockdown, you know, lock ourselves in our house. And, and again, the, the benefit of this, I now have met probably six or seven neighbors on all sides of me who before I might see, but I didn't know by name. And, and, and then we're now checking in on each other. And I've done grocery and supply runs for some of the folks that really shouldn't get out. And, uh, and that was no, no sweat off my back to do that. Well, I, I applaud that and I applaud your take on it and, and uh, all that you do. And, and uh, it's funny, um, the little things we miss. But I, I agree. I've been saying and speaking, Bill, for a long time. I said, you know, what's the old Queen song? We say, I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. And, you know, when the now has been, why can't I get it? Uh, I, it is a good lesson for the millennials and then this next generation, which is, is, is my kids and probably Olivia, uh, Gen, Gen Z. Uh, you know, they don't, don't, they all grew up and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this with, with, you know, you could pretty much find anything on the internet, went through school on the internet. And if you didn't do that, you had technology at your fingertips sometime you were little <laughs> and that's great. But you know, when you have to go back to basic thinking and math, math and like you said, what your neighbor's doing, you're, you're not, you don't need to call the city commissioner to help a, help a friend or a neighbor. I mean, this is just common sense leadership. And that's why I want to do some of these shows so people could watch other programming and, and, and experts and leaders and not just watch the next headline on CNN or Fox at night. Or the next projection. Or yeah. The next projection. I mean, servant, servant leadership, as you know, because you are one, is as much as anything else, being an exemplar and doing things that you should be doing already and helping other people do the same thing and see it. Let them know we can kind of have some degree of normalcy here and move on with our lives and take care of our children and, and not just kind of cocoon and shut ourselves in, in, the, in a you know, cave in the basement. Well, and I, I appreciate that, Bill. I feel the same way about you. And uh, that's exactly right. I mean, I, I keep trying to say this is not underplaying the, the, the pandemic. On the other hand, the, the uh, you know, whatever doomsday the world's coming to an end the world and and we we are going to get past this and you're right we might have a lot of sports in the fall i mean we might have a lot of sports on the nba season i was reading this morning that they're gonna have to delay next season so they can do i was looking that you know pick one city and have three game you know tournaments i mean everybody though if you think about that they're thinking so far outside the box so for a business a friend of mine uh, had mentioned you know whenever it seems like it was two months ago we talked i think it was about 10 days ago two weeks ago i don't know what day it is bill but uh in all seriousness he was just saying you know business has got to pivot during this moment and, and rethink things and that's how this launched we did a facebook live and the people were like hey could i could i tell what i'm dealing with and i said sure and then 
you know, the, the marketing matters, you know, show you were going to come on in the station. I was like, we're not going to be bringing people in there right now. So let's do something different, you know, and just bring leaders together to say, uh, this, this too shall pass. Everybody's feeling the stuff the same way. Make hay out of uh, this downtime. And, um, because again, before we know it, we just don't want to, you're a history guy. I'm a history guy. You don't want to ever forget the lessons learned during this time. We have a client that uh, called Georgia Extracts. They produce CBD. And because of the stasis of the Georgia General Assembly and a law that's very instrumental to setting up that marketplace, they were kind of, the brakes were slammed on. But they noticed this crunch and need for hand sanitizer. So on March the 15th, they flipped the entire factory in Watkinsville to the production of hand sanitizer and, and sanitizing spray with pharmaceutical grade, 80% alcohol. And they've moved 2 million ounces of that stuff in wow. less than two weeks to hospitals, to municipal organizations, to counties. And a lot of that stuff being that it was imported and the ports also down significantly for lots of different reasons. Um, it's at affordable prices instead of going on some of the online marketplaces and getting gouged. So that was not even in their business plan 30 days ago, but they're doing it and moving forward on the CBD stuff. The first seeds go in the ground for the first legal crop this June, and they're, ha they're already pre-hiring 250 people for July. So there are good news stories out there besides the big box retailers hiring. They're just not getting the attention. And I have some friends on Facebook who've been trying to push some of the World Health Organizations to release the cleared number. We had in, in Metro Atlanta, 400 cruise passengers that temporarily were housed in National Guard housing space on Dobbins Air Force Base. You may remember that a couple of weeks ago, everybody's panicking up in Cobb County about these coronavirus folks coming. Well, they've all been cleared. They're right. all at home. They're not there anymore. And I've seen one, one story in the Marietta Daily Journal noting that so all of those people came in all of them were quarantined some of them were treated some of them were hospitalized but today they're all home right and we don't hear that story we we, we no. just hear and now you're right we watch graphs at night and if you think about this because I don't want the video to go too long because I want to make sure the <laughs> shirt saves for our audience you and I can talk watch. yes yeah, but, but what I was going to say is, you know, it's funny, you were talking about the newspapers again. I was telling uh, Laura, my wife, last night, I said, you know, it's almost like the old days of people watching the evening news together, right? You know, because so you got people waiting to hear what that day oh, brings. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. But, you know, you're watching these guys, which really, honestly, no matter how high education you have, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish my part of my drill I'm working on, they're making their best guesses with statistical models. And to a certain degree, you're right, exactly right. How many of those people, we don't hear about the people that have already had it, gotten better. We once in a while see a reporter that had it and they're showing some symptoms, but they're on the other side of it. We just talk about the new people and uh, that's faulty math. That's just faulty math. And I think that that just creates anxiety and uh, panic, which again, if we do our due diligence and, and, and follow social distancing and do our jobs of all doing that, we we'll come back together as America and I'm ready to see, you know, a, a, a ball game or whatever, however that's going to look in the future. I think we all, we miss those things. And, um, you know, I, I just appreciate you, Bill, and I appreciate you coming on and let people know if they want to uh, connect with you for all the things you do, how's the best way people can reach out to you? Uh, I am on Facebook. I am on CSI, CSI crane.com. We have a website with a direct link to me. Uh, my mobile, though I don't want to be inundated, I'll go ahead and share. It's 404-964-5609. And I'm very responsive to email. We've got clients that have been coming to us with different communication needs this week, but sometimes people just want to hear a friendly voice. So feel free yep. to reach out and I'll try to respond back. Fear spreads faster than any contagion. Be a voice of reason in your household, in your community, particularly around children. They're looking at you and paying attention to everything you do and say. And tell your neighbors, just remind them as you're waving to them or, or carrying the groceries over their way we'll get through this and it'll probably be early summer, but normalcy will return and just keep the faith. All right, man. I appreciate that. that means a lot to me too, because you know, when my three kids here, they're watching every movement I make and uh, you know, it's hard at times, but uh, you're a hundred percent right. So that's inspirational for me today. I sure appreciate you. Take care. And thanks for having me on. Absolutely. This is Bill Crane, owner of CSI Crane. And uh, you've been watching another community connections. We'll see you next time folks. Thank you.